Say hey, Yellow Jacket fans, welcome to the Coach Hal Lamb Show. And Coach, congratulations, a 63-7 victory. The victory was, you know, pretty much in hand early, but mostly congratulations on your 100th consecutive region victory. Yeah, it was pretty awesome, Dave. Yes. I thought we uh, came out of the gate fast, obviously, and uh, got control of the game uh, really, really fast. Uh, I was, uh, after talking to the coach from Tatuga early in the, uh, before the game, uh, you know, he had some kids that didn't show up money for practice, so I, I kind of figured it was going to be like that. Uh, I didn't think they're, they were in it as much as they have been because, you know, we saw some tape on them. They, and they almost beat Coosa and they almost beat a couple other teams, so they weren't as bad as they, they played last night, no. you know, being the last game of the season. Uh, it was just a tough deal for them, but our kids came out and took care of business and were really pleased the way we handled, handled the game. Yeah, they cost me a pick earlier in the season. I picked against them. So uh, I, this, the team that we saw Friday night was not the team that no. was playing three or four weeks ago. To say that you started quickly is an understatement. They do an onside kick, and then our first offensive play is a 52-yard touchdown pass from Fields Chapman to Titus Curtis. That is Fields' 21st touchdown pass of the year and Titus' 10th re touchdown reception of the year. So we kick off. They fumble the kickoff. We recover it to 12, and then Alex Urbano, back on his first carry and he gets a 12-yard touchdown uh, run and just like that Chattooga hasn't run a play and we're up 14 nothing. Yeah we actually wanted Alex to get a little more carries than he got last night but I, th I think he had four carries for you know 30 something yards so it was a good uh, start for him to get back from that injury but uh, he, he and Cole are going to have to carry the load for us uh, in the playoffs. It's going to be nice to have two running backs yeah. that uh, you can do every other play, every other series, however you want to do it. It's going to be a nice rotation plan. Yeah, we're, we're happy about that. You know, it's, it's kind of like, uh, you know, Georgia when they had Gurley and Marshall. Yes. You know, but Marshall's obviously hurt. But, uh, you know, it's, it, you got to have two backs, and especially going into the playoffs that you feel good about, and we, we definitely do that. And you can never have enough depth, particularly at the skill positions, can you? Right, and you know, you throw Jaira in there, and that's a third back, and then you got Aliko, who's really going to be good one day, and uh, if he continues to get better. Jaira, the Iron Man. Yeah, Jaira can do anything. Iron Man Mike. Yeah. I mean, my golly, is he just bowling down the field some plays. <clears throat> Excuse me, just outstanding. Uh, lots of guys did a lot of good things last night. As we said, Fields is up to 21 touchdown passes. Kalen Riley threw two touchdowns. Balen Spector came in through a touchdown pass. Um, Carson Brown got his second recept touchdown reception of the year. Ethan Woodard, Oliko Dennis, both got their first touchdown receptions. And o Oliko Dennis's catch and then run for his touchdown reception was pretty special. Yeah, Oliko, as I said earlier, he, he's got a chance to be a special player, but he's got to continue to work hard in the weight room and get stronger and bigger and, uh, you know, keep having, he's got a great attitude. If he continues having a great attitude, he's going to be special. Maybe... The two highlights that stick out for me outside of the fact that we got our 100th consecutive region victory was Jason Hawkins' debut bringing out the number ones, the second unit, and the whole team on the Jumbotron. Yeah, I didn't get a chance to see that uh, uh, much, but uh, yeah, that was interesting. I'll have to, I'm going to have to talk to Jason about that. <laughs> it, was a, it was outstanding. And besides the 100 victories, the highlight had to be one of the Dane Clark Fives, one of the Hogs, getting a touchdown. Truett Moss with his first touchdown as a varsity player with the Yellow Jackets recovered a fumble in the end zone. Yeah, I really couldn't see that from where I was standing on the sideline, but I'm anxious to see that on film. But uh, <clears throat> I know Truett was excited about getting his first touchdown. I'm not real sure if he realizes he actually did what he did even on the drive home after the game. Well, he probably, you know, had many days of being a running back when he was eight, nine, ten years old, but, you know, he kind of outgrew that position. <laughs> <laughs> he did outgrow that position. Outstanding uh, job by the Yellow Jackets. As we said, to back up the 13th consecutive region victory, we get the one their 100th consecutive region win against Chattooga, and then it's off, and we'll be talking about the first-round matchup with Manchester later on in the show. Sounds good. Sounds good to you? Mm -hmm. All right, let's hear from our supporters, and we're going to come back and take a look at the first half highlights. You're watching the Coach Hal Lamb Show. CNA Nursing School of Calhoun, offering you a fast, affordable path to a career in medicine. Find out how you can become a certified nursing assistant. Visit cnanursingschool.com. Hi, I'm Jack with Southtel Communications. We are proud to be a sponsor of the Hal Lamb Show. We've always been a sponsor of the Calhoun Athletic Program. 
and we're very proud of their record and Coach Lamb. Southtel uh, is busy doing their jobs every day, trying to help people communicate around the United States here, especially in Georgia. We thank everyone for their patronage and also like to remind everybody to support the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, which is one of Southtel's other uh, community uh, coordinators that they uh, represent. CNA Nursing School of Calhoun, offering you a fast, affordable path to a career in medicine. Find out more about advanced nursing courses. Visit cnanursingschool.com. Welcome back to the Coach Hal Lam Show. And Coach, it was a hand warmer kind of night. And by the time the game ended, you and I were ready to get to the house because it got a little crisp there in the third and fourth quarter. Yeah, it did get cold, and that's probably the first time I've been wet in, in the third quarter. Uh, they kind of snuck on, up on me and got me in the third quarter, so I was really cold the fourth quarter. Well, I'll tell you how cold it was. I think the ice from the, when they dumped on you, it's still laying on the yeah. field. It hasn't <laughs> melted yet. So uh, we were looking at the game, and Todd said, good God, look at all that ice. Who'd they get? And I said, I think it was Coach Lamb out of the corner of my eye, but I'm not real sure. Senior night, 24 seniors making their last regular season appearance at Phil Reeves Stadium. Yeah, it's always a special night for our, our seniors and, um, and their parents. And, um, you know, it's, it's great to recognize those, those guys uh, there before the game. And uh, as a lot of hard work goes into that, you know, preparing that, I want to thank the people that got senior night or organized. And there's a sign that you put up not long after you got here, maybe a week or two after you got here, and it says like, if you stay, you will become champions. Those who stay will be champions, and you know, and I'm, we're not talking about champions on the field, which you know they right. are, but uh, we're talking about champions as a person. And I think these guys are, have their head on the right right way, and they're going to do good things in the future. When you go through four years of football at the high school level, and particularly at the success level that we're having, but no matter where you are, whether you go 0 and 10 or 10 and 0. Four years is a lot of work, a lot of effort, and it teaches you a lot about life, doesn't it? Yeah, we, we sent the seniors out early to the coin toss, and that's what I told our younger guys. Guys, you got to enjoy it because it's going to be gone before you know yeah. it. Uh, they, these guys can remember being freshmen, and it goes by really fast. Yeah, and we're, we're scrolling down through the seniors, and I don't know if you want to list them all or we'll do it later on, but um, uh, just an out outstanding group. And once again, this is a group of seniors that has played – around six seasons of football if they're at any other school in Georgia. Well, they're 51-3 and three and uh, haven't lost a region game. And, uh, you know, that says a lot about their, their work habits and their character and uh, their will to succeed. I kind of thought you were going to start Alex Urbano tonight because you picked him as one of your captains. Well, I wanted to, we wanted to spot play him and wasn't going to start him uh, earlier in the week. And then we got to thinking about senior night, so we let him start on senior night. The rest of the captains for the Yellow Jackets are? You got Alex Urbano, Hayden Crabtree, Ross Callahan, and Brandon Blaylock. The Indians won, and as the sign run-through sign says, we can do anything we want to. And I missed the... I uh, missed it too, Dave. The, the, the guys are too quick. But uh, Chatuga won the coin toss and actually deferred. Yeah, that was interesting. That, that doesn't happen very often. No, it doesn't. Uh, but, you know... They had done some crazy things with their kickoff, so we were really prepared for it. We hadn't seen them do this, but uh, I thought we handled it pretty good. Uh, we got the ball got to bouncing crazy, but it did go out of bounds. Well, we, yeah, we, we anticipated. We held our ground and got our hands on it, and it was just took some funky bounces. First and ten, coach from our forty-eight, and we there it goes. Our, we got our two back set in there, and uh, they had one on one over there, and we like our odds with Titus. Good throw, good catch. Yeah, you, I kind of like your odds, too. Yeah. 21st touchdown pass of the year for Fields Chapman. 10th touchdown reception for Titus Curtis. It was a 52-yarder, and we're up 6 to nothing. Drew McCracken going to do the snapping. Uh, Thomas Lester holding and Brandon Blaylock kicking. So uh, Drew's going to hang a clothesline back there, and Thomas catches it, and then boom, boom, puts it through the upright. And we're up 7 to nothing. There's 8 seconds gone in the game. It's 11.52. Yeah, that you know, obviously that's a good start. Uh, we had really hadn't planned on running that pass play, the first play, but uh, Coach Davis got in the two back set and liked that we were one on one over there, so he took the chance. Toe meets leather, down the field it goes, and this is a good kickoff down to the seven yard line right next to the numbers. And then the kid makes a mistake of going cross field. And then we ripped the ball loose there. 
actually Michael Stacy uh, made the tackle, uh, stripped the ball, and uh, recovered the ball. So that was a great play by Michael Stacy. I thought that was very good kickoff coverage as well. How many stars does he get for that? Uh, he'll get uh, three. <laughs> That's pretty good. All righty, first and ten. Alex Urbano touches the ball, and the Italian stallion runs through number 37, who didn't want any part of him, and it's a touchdown. Yeah, a little uh, zone play there, and a good blocking up front by the Dane Clark five, and uh, glad to see number one. It's been a while since we've seen him on the field running the football. And he showed good quickness. Yes, he did. He, you know, he's he's not ready to play an entire game because of he's not in game shape. Uh, that, that's what the reason is. Good to have somebody like Cole Jackson to help him. Jack DeFour at left tackle, Truett Moss left guard, Katrova Dew at center, Matt Landry at right guard, and Nathan Walraven at right tackle. Folks, get a look at these starters because they're not going to be in the game very long. No, it, it's one of those games where I struggled as a head coach because we really, really could have scored a lot of points. <laughs> and I really didn't want to score. You know, there were a couple of coaches wanting to, not wanting to, but they did mention, let's score 100 on our 100th victory. But uh, I said, guys, we can't do that. No, the, the, folks, I'm sitting next to a coach that doesn't like to score 50, and he, he put up 63, and it's one of those situations, how do I not score and still encourage the guys to play, to give their best? A uh, young man just drops the pass. They had an opening in the flat, and this is one of the few times that they actually had an opening. Yeah, we didn't play that very well, man, but uh, luckily he dropped the ball. And the running back goes to the right-hand side, and Hayden Crabtree's ready there to swallow him up, and then a bunch of gold hats all over the ball. Great play by Hayden Crabtree. Our front three, Austin Bird, Dustin Harris, and Hayden Crabtree, are playing extremely well. The quarterback under a lot of pressure, Austin Bird all over him, and then the, the kid did the right thing. This is their senior starting quarterback. They're going to go to the freshman. Their original freshman quarterback is injured. Yeah. And, and actually, the freshman, uh, the, the one that did not play, he's a pretty good little old football player for a freshman. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know how bad he was injured. I, I don't think he wanted to put him in this situation. Good punt return by Chandler Curtis there. I thought if the sideline hadn't gotten away, he was going to break it and get open. He had to cut back and uh, outstanding return by Chandler to get it back down deep. All righty, Yellow Jack's on the move again. This Jack of Gun offense is doing whatever they want, whenever they want. Fields tries to find Brett Moss in the end zone. No flag. That was a good throw by uh, Fields, and uh, I think if Brett hadn't tripped, he'd have caught that ball. Well, he, their feet got tangled up. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the turf. I was kind of looking for a pass interference call. Cole Jackson breaks one tackle, fakes another guy out of his shoelaces, and then finally three guys corralling him. Got a late hit, hit here at the end, and... Uh, some of our guys come to the well, defense. Well, I told Katrova, I really, really appreciate him having Fields back because that, that was a cheap shot on Fields, but uh, he didn't handle it the right way and uh, didn't want anybody to get ejected and not play next week, so uh, we had to talk about that situation. Yeah, you, you want him to have Fields back, and probably the next thing to do, the best thing to have his back is to run a running play and put the offending guy on his pancake. Yeah. <laughs> Just hit him upside the ear hole. Fields rolls to the right-hand side, goes to the corner of the end zone, and just a little bit overthrown. Yeah, we got to make that throw because he's open. And uh, down playoffs, we, you know, Fields knows he, we got to make those plays. Katrova with the snap, give it to Cole Jackson, bangs on the right side. He's down at the five-yard line, and it should be first and goal. Or no, it's third down from the five-yard line. I'm sorry. All righty, Fields with the fake. He takes it down to the goal line. Gets hit, loses the ball, and into the end zone the ball rolls. And who lands on top of it but? Truett Moss. I saw him dive there at the end of this at the, as the fields got near the goal line, and he had the ball all the way. Touchdown. Yep. Fields is not real happy about fumbling that ball, but, you know, he'll greatly give a touchdown to Truett. Yes, yeah. Fields will give up a rushing touchdown so Truett can get, get one of his own. So one of the hogs on a Dane Clark five, the left guard. Junior Truett Moss, the diesel, gets him a touchdown. Good snap. Well, a little bit high. But nonetheless, Thomas puts it down, and Brandon gets it through the upright. And Coach Rourke, Actually, that's the one he missed. Yeah, that's right. He clanked it off the left yep, upright. Yep, and, uh, you know, that, that's what happens when you get a high snap and it takes the timing off, and uh, Drew knows that. we got to get better at that. Drew's a really, really good snapper, though. Yeah, we had a – oh, and th this becomes – a typical scene that they couldn't field the kickoffs, coach. 
I know it. It was. Uh, it seemed like every time we kicked, we were going to get the ball. Yeah, and they, they just really struggled with that. Shotgun formation, actually a pistol. They want to run the option to the left-hand side. There's just no place to go. Nice job by Tyler Ellis. That's a good job by Tyler Ellis and uh, Tristan Fuller. Good change of direction by Tristan. Yeah, Tristan made him cut back inside, and Tyler, after putting the initial pressure, was able to mop up. And if, if he com tries to complete this pass, it's a pick. Mm -hmm. Good coverage by Will Conley there. He'd had to drop that from the crescent moon down to the receiver <laughs> to complete that pass. Shotgun formation. Quarterback rolls to the right. He's under pressure. Fuller after him. It's a deep scramble. And then he gets back up near the, uh, near the line of scrimmage where that play started. He's knocked out at the 15. Good pressure by our front three there because we, we really didn't see any blitz there, I didn't think. And yeah. Good pressure. Good, probably a good decision by Brett here. Too many bad things can happen there with that traffic. Later on, we actually get a punt that rolls like all of our opponents yeah. roll this year. Yeah, that, that punt turned into a 15-yard roll. It ends up pretty decent. Nice defense by Chattooga that case. We didn't get much out of it. At about a yard. Yes. We missed a little kick-out block there, it looked like. Two receivers left, two to the right. Fields drops straight back. Crossing pattern to Titus. Fakes that guy out. Cuts back inside. He's still on his feet, and then he gets knocked out of bounds. No, he didn't go out of bounds there. I, I, I don't have a clue. That's a good balance by Titus. Titus has got tremendous balance. His feet get back on the ground so quick. Lead handoff to Alex Urbano. The referee about gets run over, and big gain and first down for the Yellow Jackets. Or it's going to be sh second and one. I forget which. Three receivers up left, one to the right. Little hitch pattern here, and this is a nice run after the catch. A lot of yak yards after catch. He almost gets into the yep. end zone. Good run by Logan. Good read by Fields. Good blocking down, uh, downfield also by our other receivers. First and goal to five. Got our two back set in and give it to Cole for a touchdown. Yeah, he just bangs over right side. Following Katrova, dude, Matt Landry and Nathan Walraven, and just like that, Cole Jackson's in the end zone. His seventh rushing touchdown of the season. And uh, the points are piling up, Coach. Yes, they are fast. Yes, they are fast. Brandon puts his foot to the ball, and just like that, we're up 27 to nothing. There's six minutes and 42 seconds left in the first quarter, and we're not even halfway through the first quarter. Line up in the I formation. I was wanting a running clock in the second quarter. Could, uh, could the opposing coach request that? <laughs> they fumble the kickoff again at the five. I'll tell you what, the colder it gets, Brandon Blaylock, yes. his kickoffs have been I outstanding. Agree. Usually it's just the opposite. I know. The colder the weather gets, it, it, the harder it is to kick the football. His accuracy has gotten better, and his, his kicks are going deeper. Mm -hmm. This is good defense. There's Tyler Ellis. Uh, actually, Tyler got hurt on that play. Twisted ankle? Well, he's got a... Slightly pulled growing, so we'll, we'll have to keep an eye on that. Yeah, they hand off, and there's Austin Bird with the big safety. I thought Tyler was going to get a safety in the previous play. Austin finishes it up. Yeah. <laughs> and he knows how to give the safety signal, too. Yes, he does. <laughs> All right, they're going to kick off in their 20. It's a free kick. And then they kick it deep, which was not very smart. No. They hadn't kicked it deep in any of the films that we saw. And Cole Jackson finds a nice seam, and he's down the sideline, and he goes with his first kickoff return for a touchdown, and he probably was, well, his varsity career is his first. Probably, yep. Yeah. He probably did something in rec ball or something like yeah. that. But <laughs> on the big stage, that's his first. I imagine he was a pretty good rec ball player, too. I would imagine, yeah. I would think. Yellow Jackets are up. It's 36 to nothing after the extra point kick by Brandon Blaylock. And, you know, you're on the sideline. What are you thinking? I, I'm, I'm trying to, at this point, I'm saying, you know, we got to get to the ones out for sure because it'll really get ugly if the ones are still in there. So I think we start substituting here in the first quarter. Yes, you do. I think we get them all out, to be honest with you. This is a yep, this new is, defense. This has got some uh, twos in the game. And, uh, puts us in a tough situation. That, that could have been John Register's pick six there. He, he, he wanted that one so bad. 
Johnny Cash was on that one. Being a senior, that would have been nice. It would have been a wonderful touch. They got a couple of receivers out to the left. They handed a running back going to the right-hand side, and the beast, Cameron East, just eats him up. Big easy. Blaine Anderson in on the tackle. Big easy, huh? Mm -hmm. Running backs either side of the quarterback. They do a little cross buck back there. They give to the running back going to the left, and coach, we're just blowing up the offensive line. That was a good line. play by Eastern Trotter, number 57. Force them to punt the football again. And, um, you know, we actually, you know, it looks like we blocked that pump. I thought we, we didn't. Did. He, yeah. hit, uh, he hit his up back in the buttocks, I guess you'd say. In the right force gum. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, Easton Trotter was there to block it. Yeah, you're right. Uh, Todd and Reagan both corrected me and got the right call. So we, we take over deep in their territory. A little toss out here for a sweep. Good job, get it down to the five. Good blocking on the perimeter there. Jaira Wilson and a running back to the right of shotgun Kalen Riley. Yeah, we got our two offensive line in there as well. And a good read by Kalen right here. Throwing the ball to Ethan Woodard for a touchdown. He was wide open. Yeah. <laughs> Kalen didn't uh, throw an incomplete pass. He was seven, seven for seven for about 55 yards. Yeah, your quarterback, the three of them together? Yeah. Pretty good stats yeah, last night. Well. Yeah. We had, we had about 200 yards passing and about 100 yards rushing. Which, with where we got the ball on the field, yeah. are real good stats. Yeah. Because uh, we had several plays that were real close, 43 to nothing. And uh, you're thinking right now, you know, you got to get you got to get the two some reps. So. Well, this is the earliest we've ever put the JV special teams in. You, usually, you know, they're the first one. So this is the JV special teams in the first quarter. And luckily, we, you know, if we had a JV game, we had to protect those guys' quarters, quarters. so they couldn't play this early. So, luckily, we didn't. We we're done with our JV games. Throw the ball out here on the right-hand side, trying to run a little slant and passes behind the receiver. He's pretty well covered anyway. You got the same crew in there. You got um, Blaine Anderson, Christian East, Cameron East. Um, we tried to get our seniors that, that, that don't get to play a, a whole lot, uh, some a lot of time last night. Uh, and we were glad to see like Branson Pierce in there got a lot of time. Uh, he, he's a senior. Deserves uh, the playing yeah. time. And uh, you got David Prater down here at corner. And that's who's on the coverage David, right yeah. there. And um, you got Tanner McCormick who's a solid, solid backup for us and plays a lot on special teams. Uh, he's a senior. He's made some big plays yeah, this year. Yeah. He hits hard. Yes, he does. I he's, mean, he can. He's um, not very big, but he's a physical player. He's got those uh, quick flex muscles. He can unload on you. All right, we're back on offense, forcing them to punt. Throw a screen out here to Chaz Moss. Executed pretty good, and they called a penalty on uh, Grayson Tilly, which probably was not a penalty, but at this point, you know. Yeah, let it go. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, these referees, I'll give them credit. They had a very good running clock in the second half, but they were mostly invisible. Yes, they were, which is the way I like it. <laughs> yes. Especially with a game like this, they really need to keep the flags in the pocket. Yeah. Only one I questioned is earlier, you know, the intentional grounding that they, from the quarterback, and it was a close to being a late hit by our guys on the same play. Good run by Jairo Wilson. Shows some nifty feet there as he cuts back to the right. You're going to get to see him crush a couple would-be tacklers here in a little bit also. We got, we got um, O'Shea Davis at right tackle. Spencer Cross at center. He's uh, a junior. Good job by Jaira here getting extra yardage. That's what I was talking about. Grayson Tilly, 79, a junior who's got a bright future for us next year. You got Esteban Valadares in there at uh, left guard. And they, you got, uh, I'm trying to remember, oh, Drew McIntyre, left tackle, sophomore. They still didn't knock him off his feet, yeah. Coach. He put that left shoulder, ran through a couple of chests. Good, nice crossing pattern. Good throw to Ross Callahan here, senior. Ross has had some significant plays this year. Ross has gotten a lot better in his uh, four-year career. He's, uh, and he, he's, he's a good football player, but he's even a better person. Grayson Tilly there, <laughs> coming through the parking lot with someone else. Uh, get a nice pass out here. Little tunnel screen on the left-hand side. Ball's fumbled out of bounds. It remains yellow jacket ball. That was the Carson Brown. Yes. Had to hold on to the football there. 
run his own here, and uh, Kalen just slips down there. But he gets first down. I think that was a third yes. three call. Yeah, he got the first down. Where it's a 17. A little toss sweep out here to Jaira. We had a really good play there if we blocked it up correctly, like somebody missed their block. Yeah, if Jaira is able to get to the corner, he's got a seam. He's got a lane to the end zone. Fake to Jaira. Throw screen out here to Carson Brown. and It's actually, you know, I was, I was wanting him to go north and south, but it's actually a pretty good run. Yeah, when you look at it, he, the, the field was pretty covered. The vision was good. He stepped inside the pile on his second touchdown reception of the year. Carson has really, really improved, too. He's, he's got a chance to really be a good football player next year, but uh, he, he's had a great year for us but, uh, as a junior. Good speed, and that is Alex Flores. And that snap was a little bit low, and I think that kick went yeah, off. Yeah, he missed it left. Yes, wide left. We had a little, little trouble with the low snap. I think there was some coaching up on the sidelines with the uh, special teams. Yeah. Because you, you made a change later on. Yep. Kick down to about the 12 or 13, and up the field he comes. He breaks one tackle, and he's not going to break all of them. He's going to be back at the 15. That's Bryson Bushon yeah. causing some havoc down there. Bryson is a good, good football player. He's just a sophomore. We, he's, we got high hopes for him. He gets some highlight plays later on mm -hmm. in the game. All righty. This is their other freshman quarterback, and this kid looks to be about 6'2", 6'3". Yeah, yeah, he's a good-looking kid for a freshman, and uh, he throws the ball pretty good. You know, I would have been running the ball. I wouldn't, I, you know, I didn't, want, I didn't want him to stop the clock, so I wanted him to run the football. Yeah, with good the incompletions. Good there by, a little like Blaine Anderson. Yes. Uh, Cameron East. I think there were three of them going to have to share a sack yeah. on that. And, and Coach, the... The sad part about it is that they can't run the ball, so they're trying to get something that goes downfield. Mm -hmm. And it's just a tough situation. They had a pretty good play here, and it wasn't bad coverage by David Prater. He's just got to squeeze him to the sideline, and that's what we talked about. And it was a well-thrown ball. Going to bring up a punting situation. We're in safe punt. Yeah, all night long. Yeah, we just... Uh, Back to receive the punt. We've had Bale Inspector back there, Chaz Moss, and you just let, if the ball goes over your head, who cares? Just let it roll. We're going to take over their 40 yard line. There's still a bunch of time left in the first half, coach. We run the power read here, and good read by Caitlin. Good job getting downfield, get positive yards. Covered up the ball there, Wayne, went to get hit, too. Hang on to that ball. Big game by we Kalen. We talked to Kalen about not taking big hits, and uh, you know, he, he's done a good job with that. We'll pass out here in the flat to, I think that's Oliko, isn't it? Yep, good read by Kalen right there. Good catch by Oliko. He uh, got downfield after a couple shake and bake moves. Give it to him again, goes to right now. He cuts back to the left-hand side, and this kid's pretty shifty and nifty. Yeah, we just got to get north and south there and get the ball in the outside on there. Just the little things he's got to get better at. Good, good coaching point there. We can show him on film. Nice thing about it, he has the number nine next to his class. Yep. Good job of rolling, and here's the example of getting yeah, down. That was a good job by Kay. The only thing, we had a screen call, and he just needs to throw it at the feet of the receiver so we don't lose that many yards. Yeah, That's what I told him. Lost nine on that. Roll to the left-hand side. We find Jarrett Carden, a good catch, good throw. Jarrett's going to be a, uh, he's a 10th grader. He's a good football player, has good hands. Uh, we got to get him a little bigger and stronger, but he, he'll help us next year as well. At the end of that play, the tackler number eight threw Jarrett to the ground on unsportsmanlike conduct, so it goes at the three and a half. First and goal. It's not going to take long. No. No. Oliko has it, and he busts into the end zone. So. <laughs> Puts his shoulder down. He got north-south that time, Coach. Yeah, he did. That was a good run by Lico. Good blocking up front. We got Alex Flores again. Fourth rushing touchdown for Lico. Who's holding the snapping? That is Drew still snapping. Okay. And, uh, Thomas Lester oh, was still okay. holding. We All just right. changed kickers. All right. We need to rest Brandon's leg. <laughs> Wearing him out. He was. Uh, he kicked five more extra points, and his kickoffs have just been outstanding. And once again, Coach, they drop it. Oh, my golly. Now the ball's loose on the ground, and number 30 for Chattooga covers it up. 
Yeah, that was good kickoff coverage there, and I thought we was going to get another one inside the 10. It's going to be first and 10 at the 10. Good running play here. Nice yeah, hole up front. Get some yardage here. You got uh, Zach Ruth in there at corner. He's a junior. Uh, let's see who else we got in there. We got still got Branson Pierce in there. We got uh, Angel Cornejo, number 56, in their defensive end. He's a senior. Chase Jackson, senior free safety. The brother of Cole Jackson. Or, yes. Or vice versa. Siblings. <laughs> Folks, they had a nine yard gain on the first play. And then we keep backing them up. And this is the young black shirt defense that Coach Hobb the Elder's doing the job too. Go out here on the left hand side. They actually get a first down. There you go. Third and about five and execute a little hitch route out there. That is their second first down of the evening. Running back, running hard, puts his shoulder down. Gets a good positive gain. Three receivers to the right, shotgun formation. Their injured quarterback isn't as tall as this kid. He's only about a 5'8", five, 5'9". Five, well, now. Tanner almost has a pick. I thought that was a late hit by 59 there. Yeah. But we could have had, our, a couple of seniors could have had picks. Uh, John Register could have had a pick six, and of course Tanner wish he had that one back. Oh, the receiver heard Good coverage footsteps. by John Register Number and, and <laughs> Jaira. Jaira actually took it easy on him. I think this is a fourth down play, and uh, from my angle, I thought he caught the football, but uh, it was an incomplete pass. I did too, up in the booth. So we'll get it on fourth down there. Take over on downs with 3:08 left in the first half. It's time to get Baylor Inspector in the game, and was uh, he quick? Yeah, he's going to be a good player. He'll. He'll play a, a good bit for us next year as a sophomore. Well, you had him earlier in the game. Wide as a, out, a uh, corner. Yeah, there you go, as a corner. Yep. Balin's going to finish out the game at quarterback. Uh, we flinched a little bit on the blitz. Yeah, you know, when Chatuga started the season, they had around 57 players, and as you said, Coach was talking to you before the game. 32 showed up on Monday, and he, he's just rolling the dice, isn't he? Yeah, it's a tough situation, and uh, you know I really don't know what I'd do in that situation. Um, but it, it really that was a good throw, good catch by. Gets his feet going, Oliko Dennis down inside the 25. He cuts back to the right hand side. He's at the five, keeps his balance, and he scores his first receiving touchdown. That's a great run there. Yes, it is. Good execution by Kalen because uh, the blitz we had coming up the middle, we got nobody for him, so it was a kind of a hot read, I guess you'd say, and Kalen made a good throw. There's Alex again from PAT. And folks, the points are adding up. It's 63 to nothing with 210 left. And you're gonna, yeah, nice move. And we're gonna let Juan Palmerin do the kicking off. He gets it down to the 12, they drop it. There's a scrum for the ball. And I think we came up with that. And that is... Bryson Bushong. There's your highlight mm -hmm. play for number yep. 46. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Bryson gets the kickoff fumble recovery. Goodness gracious. You know, I can't imagine what their coaches are going through. Hand off to Mr. Tao, Jordan. Yep, Jordan Tao. Cuts back to the left-hand side. He's breaking tackles. Puts his shoulder down. Gets it to the 10-yard line. And that hit I didn't like. And fortunately, we cooler heads prevailed. And that's where Todd and I were talking. The officials are going to have to blow a quicker whistle yes. and get things stopped. And they did, to give them credit. Well, this is a situation I really didn't want to score. And I told Coach Davis to try not to score because he wanted to run some other stuff. And I said, no. Because uh, I think it's 63. To it is 63 right to nothing. And I really didn't want to get 70 in the first half. No. Yeah. I thought we'd score a couple more touchdowns in the second half, though. You know, but we didn't. We didn't move the ball much second half. <laughs> That's a different story. We'll leave that on Coach Davis. There, there you go. <laughs> That'll be all right. We well, should have stayed up. Should have stayed up in the yeah, pros next, right? <laughs> he could have seen better. Sixty-three to nothing at halftime. You've got all your starters out, and folks, ninety-three players dressed out. Yeah, well, we got 93 on the roster. We got a couple of them hurt, so I, I think we had 90 and 91 kids dressed out, and they all got in. There you go. We're going to hear from our supporters. 
But before we do, we're going to sit back in the old Barker lounge. I had to go get my notes to remember here. <laughs> sit back, relax. You have the best doggone band in the land. The pride of the Northland band is marching. 270 strong in the Yellow Jacket band, led by Michael Clark, assisted by Larry Brown, and led on the field for the second consecutive year by senior Hannah Knight. They'll be performing Spirit of the Bowl, Let's Groove by Earth, Wind, and Fire. A nice drum solo, followed up by Johnny B. Good, and finish off with your song by Elton John. And it was your night as the Yellow Jackets won their 100th consecutive victory. We'll be back. You're watching the Coach Hal Am Show. DNA Nursing School of Calhoun, offering you a fast, affordable path to a career in medicine. Find out more about training in phlebotomy. Visit cnanursingschool.com. Hi, I'm Jack with South Tail Communications. We are proud to be a sponsor of the Hal Lamb Show. We've always been a sponsor of the Calhoun Athletic Program, and we are very proud of their record and Coach Lamb. South Tail uh, is busy doing their jobs every day, trying to help people communicate around the United States, here especially in Georgia. We thank everyone for their patronage and also like to remind everybody to support the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, which is one of South Tail's other uh, community uh, coordinators that they uh, represent. CNA Nursing School of Calhoun, offering you a fast, affordable path to a career in medicine. Find out how you can become a certified nursing assistant. Visit cnanursingschool.com. And your song, Mr. Lomas, Ms. Anna Cook, Brandon Clark, Omar Ugarte, Thomas Pass, and Garrison Baker. Tonight's band would like to dedicate their halftime show to the seniors of 2014. They are Kenley Abernathy, Ali Atkoff, Thalia Avalos, Kara Benton, Rachel Bird, Aaron Box, Amanda Cato, Anna Carter, Brandon Clark, Anna Cook, Beth Flores, Taylor Gilbert, Dana Gomez, Karen Herrera, Meredith Holden, Grace Johnson, Ansley Jones, Hannah Knott, Alec McCaskey, Molly McKenzie, Sean Mathis, Molly Palmer, Thomas Pass, Emma Ralston, Katie Schubert, Haley Smith, Adrian Torres, Omar Ugarte, and Chloe West. Thank you very much, seniors.
Welcome back to the Coach Hal Lamb Show. And Coach, Reagan and I were talking at halftime after we gave the stats. The stats for you guys was outstanding. I think you were like 11 for 13 on passing with your three quarterbacks and it, touchdowns here, touchdowns there. Uh, Good, good rushing performance by everybody. Dan Clark Five's doing a good job, and of course the black shirt defense is pitching a shutout. And Reagan and I both agreed you're just lining up deep into the roster on who's going to play, getting your teams lined up. Well, that's what I told them at halftime. I said uh, our goal is to get everybody in this game, and if if you do not get in the game, it's your fault. So uh, I think everybody got in. <laughs> Stand close to the coach yep. and keep waving a hand. Yeah, yeah it, it was a beautiful night, and they're going to close out the regular season. Juan Palmer and doing the kickoff. The left-footed sidewinder sends it down to the 11 or 12 yard line, right on the number, coach. That was a good kick right there by uh, Juan. Blow the whistle, blow the whistle. Uh, yeah, yeah. Good coverage by our JV team. Excellent coverage. They take over at about their 26 or 27. The running back goes the wrong way. Now the quarterback's scrambling for his life. He's thinking, oh, God. Good play by Jarrett Carden and Rhett Rogers, number 84. You got Matt McCann in the game there, number 11, and uh, Nathan Petty, number 34. Uh, Balin Spector, number 13. Austin Stout, number 75, a 10th grader, going to be a really good player. Good coverage by Chase Jackson, senior. A little height disparity, but Jackson, Chase had him covered yeah, up. Number eight's a tall kid. Yes, he is. Yeah, he got a couple of tall kids there. Throws the post backside, and they had us there, just overthrew him. We weren't lined up properly back here in the secondary. Is that right? Coach Morrow was not happy. I can see that. <laughs> they punt, which is um, something they did a lot of during the night. And it gets a good roll. And right now, who cares? It's We have a running clock, and the officials did a good job with the clock. They kept it running because this second yeah, half doesn't last me, He long. told me we, he wasn't going to stop it for anything, which I said, great. Let's uh, get, get some kids in the game and move on. I was serious about it. The opposing coach could ask for a running clock in the second quarter. Uh, they do a good job of coming in and getting a sack or uh, stopping a running play before Jordan Tao could get it going. It was good defense by Chatuka. Well, we got Balin in there. We got Jordan Tao. Uh, not one of Balin's better throws there. Usually he throws that right on the money. Romy, you got to get higher. Jump, Romy, jump. Got to get some ups in those shoes. They missed my man, Romy. Throw a screen out here to, I think that was Dusty Baker. Yes, it was. You got Malik Lawrence, number 44. He's going to be a fine football player at wide receiver. He's a freshman. Good snap. There's Jonah Landry, who's doing a good job punting the football. Coach, we get a roll. Yes, we do. I give him credit for a 40-yard punt there. We'll take it. Well, Jonah's doing a good job, uh, considering we only found him as a punter about uh, a month ago, probably. Uh, the latter part of the JV season. He gets a spiral on the yeah. ball. Comes off his foot nice. Yeah, I think he's going to I think he's going to help you. Yeah. He's uh, obviously got a little technique work to do, but he's he's got a strong leg. Quarterback drops the ball. This is the, they've had the dropsies all night. And then the guys just go in and the referees to their credit started blowing the whistles mm -hmm. quicker. Mm -hmm. This is a decent crew. I'm not going to mention any comparison modes. <laughs> All right, got a guy out here in the flat. That's a nice play. Just what you like to see with these younger guys, you like to see them flying around. And, you know, some of them are young. Some of them, we've still got some seniors in there. Uh, 66 is Tucker Foster. He's a junior. Almost had a pick there for Chase again. Mm -hmm. Three receivers right. Pistol formation. Quarterback rolls right. He's under pressure. And that was uh, Christian East. And there's the interception by Rhett Rogers. Got him a pick, number 84. Good pick by Rhett. Rhett's a sophomore and has it, played well for us at Mike Linebacker and receiver. There's another throw that Balin wishes he had back. That's Colby Reynolds. This is his first game back. He's had collarbone issues. Yes. But uh, Colby's a really, really good football player. He's missed a a lot of time with that collarbone, in, collarbone injury, but he's going to be a good player for us. Yeah, he got a lot of playing time earlier yes. in the season. Yep. Two receivers left, two right. Balin drops back, avoids the rush, goes up the middle, loses about a yard, but he did the right thing, eat the ball, and yeah. live for another day. And we're going to punt again. 
and forced the punt. Good snap by Jacob Callahan. Uh, you know, we, we always seem to have snappers here at Callahan High School. Don't you? And uh, with Drew being a junior and uh, Jacob's the next one in line, he works extremely hard. He's just a freshman. Well, let me tell you about a guy I saw warming up in pregame. He wears number 40. You got to see him snap. Yeah, he's really good, too. <laughs> what doesn't he do? And that's going to help him down the road, too, as far as colleges, you know, recruiting. Coach, I, well, I was. Jira can do anything you ask me. We probably, he probably could kick it through the uprights if you ask him to. Yeah, wouldn't surprise me. 43 down here at corners, Jamie Reynolds. Mm. Um, Slobber knocker. That was Balin on the yeah. play. Your quarterback. Number 60 is uh, Blake Garland at defensive end. I think Balin actually took it easy on the kid. Nick Allen, number 42 at defensive end. Marcos Ambrosio, number 76 at nose guard. Forcing the punt again. And yeah, number 54 is learning not to move to the left because that way he doesn't get kicked with the ball. They down it at our 34-yard line where we'll take over. We're 9.30 left in the fourth quarter. What's disappointing, and there wasn't a whole lot disappointing, but no. uh, we, did, we just didn't move the ball offensively like I thought we would the second half. No, you didn't. And it was, that was a little disappointing. Yeah, we, uh, we had to punt the first two possessions in the third quarter. This one's not going to turn out the best. Good hard run. That's uh, Bryson Bushong, and he's another kid. We made a position change. We had him at receiver, uh, but we we moved him to running back about uh, three or four weeks ago. He stuck it up in a hole, he's coach. A, he's, we're going to leave him there too because he's got really good speed. You know, defense is probably going to be his his side of the ball, but we're really? going to work him at running back some too. He sticks it in the hole. This is fourth down. Uh, Balin should have pulled that ball and probably could have had the first down. Yeah. Probably should have punted it. Coach uh, Big Hob wasn't too happy about us uh, I was just, punting there. I was just going to ask. <laughs> yeah, because now he, now the, the young black shirt defense is really in a hole. It's first and ten to two get the 36-yard line. The only thing this did was save me some money. I yes, it did. donuts. Yes, it did. That was a good catch, good throw and catch. Great catch. Thought we had pretty good coverage. Yeah, that's uh, number eight for them. Garrett Salmon, a senior wide receiver, and he laid out and got that ball. Run the option. First time they've had a little bit of a, where the running back after receiving the pitch could actually take a couple steps without being smacked. Herschel, Herschel Patel making the tackle there, number 41. Yeah. We're in on the tackle. Look to the left-hand side. And this is good coverage by Dalen Silvers. That's gr uh, good defense. That's tenth grader. Because he, that kid's a lot taller than yeah. him. I like how he got a little hand out there. He hit the guy in a slant down to the one yard line. I like how he had a little, he was using both yeah, hands. You yeah. know what I mean? No, and no interference call. I like that. Good play there by Easton Trotter again. I thought we we're going we're gonna to keep him out, but yeah, there was I too much too. time on yeah. the clock. Yeah. They just had too, mu too much time. I think if he could have tackled him for a little more of a loss there, <laughs> he wind up getting back to the line of scrimmage. Yeah. And the quarterback sneak for a touchdown. Yeah, they run the quarterback sneak. So good for Chattooga. They get into the end zone. So they've got something to go home and smile about. And, uh, you know, when you, you're hanging 63 on somebody, uh, it's nice that the other team has something good to say, to think about also. Sorry, Coach Hobb. Wish you could have gotten a shutout. Yeah, he wanted that shutout, man. Hey, running clock every region game this year. Yeah. Mm. Every game we played in the region. 63-7 to seven with 2.20 left, and uh, we're going to run a couple plays and run out the clock, and we're gonna, they're going to do an onside kick. And that's a nice job by number 47 for the Jackets. That's Christian East. He did a good job of covering that Morgan. up. Yep. Good hands. It looked like a shortstop on the baseball team. Throw screen out here to Malik Lawrence. And, uh, and I thought he might score here for a minute. I, when he broke that one right there, when he made that cut, I thought, ooh, he's going to get down the sideline. And fortunately, they're trapping down at the 24-yard line, and that's a, a good way to end the game. The Yellow Jackets and the Indians are going to meet at midfield to shake hands, and you now have your 100th consecutive victory. And when we come back, we're going to take a look at the plays of the game, and the we're going to look at a nice award that was presented to you on the field after mm -hmm. the game. Yep. You're watching the Coach Hallam Show. 
CNA Nursing School of Calhoun, offering you a fast, affordable path to a career in medicine. Find out more about advanced nursing courses. Visit cnanursingschool.com. Hi, I'm Jack with Southtel Communications. We are proud to be a sponsor of the Hal Lamb Show. We've always been a sponsor of the Calhoun Athletic Program, and we're very proud of their record and Coach Lamb. Southtel uh, is busy doing their jobs every day, trying to help people communicate around the United States, here especially in Georgia. We thank everyone for their patronage, and also like to remind everybody to support the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, which is one of Southtel's other uh, community uh, coordinators that they uh, represent. CNA Nursing School of Calhoun, offering you a fast, affordable path to a career in medicine. Find out how you can become a certified nursing assistant. Visit cnanursingschool.com. Welcome back to the Coach Hal Am Show. And Coach, our offensive and defensive plays of the game are coming up, and we're going to highlight some young Yellow Jackets, a freshman and a sophomore. And we're going to see the play right here. This the first one's going to be the defensive play. Yeah, defensive play here. We put pressure on the quarterback, and uh, Rhett Rogers, number 84, makes an interception uh, right there on the sideline. Good, good interception by Rhett Rogers. Also, good pressure. It looked like by Easton Trotter or Christian East. I couldn't tell. Almost thought it was a sack. Balen Specter, quarterback for our offensive play of the game. Good read by the quarterback. Good catch, and an even better run by Aliko Dennis. Two freshmen. Yep. Good job by. Baylor and Aaron, a great run, setting up his blockers and then shows his speed and quickness. quickness. And, and then keeps his balance and gets into the end zone. Yep. That are your defensive and offensive plays of the game. After the game ended, the Yellow Jacket Calhoun Touchdown mm -hmm. Club made a nice presentation to yeah, you. Yeah, it was uh, a nice presentation here. Can we see it? Yeah, I think we'll move the helmet here. So, and I believe it says presented to Coach Hal Lamb and staff by the Calhoun Touchdown Club for 100 consecutive region football victories from October 26, 2001 to present. And as you said, I'll let you do all the thanking. Hey, we got a cake too. Oh yeah, wow. we got a little cake. I thought we, uh, Coach, Long al Coach Long always buys donuts for the crew here I for you and I. So um, on behalf of us, 100 W's, 13 titles, and uh, instead of donuts, we can have a cake. That'll get eaten tomorrow or Sunday afternoon, won't it there, Coach Long? Thank you, guys. I appreciate that. I got together with the coaches and got you an additional gift. Oh, what was that? Well, the uh, coaches and players all went together, collected a big pool of money. And since uh, you always get them something when they pitch a shutout, here's for shutting out the region for 13 consecutive years, Coach. Hey. You can open it up and you can see what's inside. Oh, it might be a donut. It might be. <laughs> It might be. You have, oh, pitched yeah. a, you have pitched a shutout for 13 consecutive years. And so I won't eat this on camera, but it will be eaten. <laughs> All right. So, uh, hey, uh, congratulations. It, it just doesn't get any better. Uh, briefly sum up what you said on the field because uh, I, I listened to you before we went back on the radio, and I thought what you said was nice. Well, the touchdown club, you know, this, all this is not possible without the right. touchdown club in there. They're unbelievable, very supportive of uh, what we're doing. You know, look at the Trumb Jumbotron there. And wow. Was, you know, that was their project and they took care of it and it's a huge addition to our stadium. But, you know, it just is not about this team. You know, we had, since 1999, we've had a lot of players wear the black and gold and this is for them too. Uh, they're part of the 100 victories, uh, you know, starting in 2001. But there's a lot of kids that have come through this program and. Hopefully we've made a positive in impact on their life, but uh, it's, it's been a great run, obviously. Uh, not hopefully, there has been a lot of positive impact made by everybody that has been connected mm -hmm. with the staff and connected with this program, as well as in the school. So Yellow Jacket's doing things great. Great things are being accomplished, not only on the field, but off the field also. I remember our first trip for the mini playoff down to Cartersville. To yeah, that place. was many years ago, but I can remember it like it was yesterday. That's Same sure. here. Yeah, I, I remember it. It was a cold, crisp night, and uh, once again, it, uh, it started with the 1999 team. They bought in. The community started buying in, and when that first playoff, vic that mini playoff victory down there, just really started the playoff action. Mm -hmm. So congratulations. You're on the verge of getting, continuing the consecutive game winning streak for the season. And that starts next week as we host Manchester, the Region 5, number 4 seed. Yeah, there's a lot of 
uh, mixed communications, I guess you'd say, but we are playing Manchester uh, next Friday at Field Reef Stadium. Uh, you know, Manchester's a team that put our boys' basketball team out of the playoffs last year, so uh, we know what kind of athletes they got, and uh, we played them a few years ago. I can't remember what year it was, but they're going to bring some good athletes in here, and uh, we'll, we, we need to prepare and be ready to go. I agree. That will be 7.30 at the Reeve at Phil Reeve Stadium. It'll be this coming Friday as the playoff action begins. And uh, it's, it's been a good season. Yeah, it has. You know, it's the third season starts, and, you know, you wake up this morning and look at the brackets, and, you know, we've got a very, very tough draw. But uh, wow. that's, that's part of it, and uh, we'll, we'll play them one at a time and see what happens. The real season begins now, as so many fans and as the coaching staff has, sold, has told us many, many times. So, uh, yeah, you'll probably get an early start on it on Sunday, won't you? Yeah, we're going to move things up a little bit uh, in preparation, bring the kids in Sunday evening uh, for some position meetings. And, you know, we change our uh, thinking a little bit when it's playoff time because you lose, you're done. So we gotta, we got to turn it up a notch, and the kids understand that. Don't forget you can watch the Coach Hal Am show starting Sunday at noon all the way up to Thursday at midnight by going to www.calhountdclub.com. A big shout out and thank you also to Coach Bill Long and his broadcast video production class. And to you fans for watching, we appreciate you tuning in. 13 consecutive region championships, 100 consecutive region victories. Coach Hal Lamb to my right, we appreciate everything that he's done. And guys, good luck and good health. Playoffs start this coming Friday against Manchester. You've been watching the Coach Hal Lamb Show.